all right guys so in this video we're going to be working on texturing the tires and uh, this is a bit complicated uh, it actually took me some time to work on this one and uh, it was a bit uh, complex so uh, I'm actually looking, looking on a second screen right now to actually show you guys what I actually came up with because if I try to remember what I actually came up with offhand it might actually be a bit uh, rough so yeah let's get started on this before we actually we start we, before we actually start on this i want you guys to know i don't actually record my videos with a studio mic so you might be experiencing some uh, environmental noises in my videos pretty sure you guys have already noticed that but hopefully in the future i get some uh, good equipment for my recording and everything seems just fine all right let's get started so we're working on the tire uh, we're going to take the front front left tire as it's labeled over here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Ctrl and A, and I'm going to apply the rotation and scale, okay? And then what you're going to do is make sure your uh, object origin is right in the center of the tire, okay? So right in the dead center. Now I'm going to press the, the, the um, division sign on a numpad to go over to local view. As you can see right here, it says local. And I want to begin doing this. So I'm going to add in, right now we only have the car paint, so I'm going to add in a new material. I'm going to call this tire, all right? So we're just going to call it tire. Oh, let's add material tire material okay so basically it gives us just a um, a principal BSDF and the material output so we're gonna begin off because from what I've done uh, most of the things that I have going on are pretty much interconnected in many ways so I want to start somewhere which looks sort of basic and then I'm going to interconnect it to everything else but I'll be explaining along the way and uh, hopefully you guys get everything right so right now the basic the basic setup is actually from my roughness all right not from my basic shader it's from my roughness here so we're going to begin with the roughness and then we're going to go up to the base color and then to the normal and then displacement so let's get started on this so the first thing I'm going to add in is a is a color ramp all right so i'm going to add in a color ramp uh right here i think it's on the converter so converter color ramp right here and i'm going to zoom in right here so i'm going to leave this on linear we're not going to change it we're just going to leave it on linear and i'm going to pull this close over to about this side right here i want to drag drag this also close to this one over here like this so Okay, you know what, let's swap the positions, alright, so I'm going to move the black all the way to the side, and I'm going to move this here, and move this one even closer, like that. So I'm going to click on this, and I'm going to increase the brightness a little bit to some kind of a gray color. So uh, maybe that's too gray, so let's, let's increase that a little bit more, like that. A bit more, just a bit more. And I think that should be good. Alright, so that's our starting point. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to add in a texture coordinate. So I'm going to go on the texture and uh, let me see, what am I looking for? Is it input? Texture coordinate, where is it found? I think it's under, I'm not so sure. Is it input? Yeah, so under input you should find texture coordinate. So I'm going to put that over here and I'm going to add in a mapping. Alright, it should be under converter, no, vector mapping right here. So I'm going to set the object into the vector up here like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a noise texture. Let me just move this up here. I'm going to add in a noise texture. So on the texture, we're going to add in noise texture over here. And I'm going to set the vector of the mapping here into the vector of the noise texture. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to increase the scale of the noise texture to 7 yeah, just to 7, 7 7.0, 7,000 or 5,000. It's just 7, 7 7.0. So just type in 7 in here and then save that. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to increase the detail to 6, all right? And, and we're going to keep the distortion. We want to keep the distortion also at 8, like that. So let's take a preview of this. So we're going to be previewing, we're going to be previewing this with the material preview not the uh, not the render view, all right? So we're going to go with the material preview to preview this. So I'm going to click I'm going to press Z and then go down to Material Preview. And I'm going to, if you don't have Node Wrangler enabled in your add-ons, just go into your Preferences, go in under Add-on, and uh, enable Node Wrangler to be able to do this. So we're going to hold down Control and Shift. I'm going to left-click on this, and let's take a look at what this looks like. So this is what we have going on at the moment, all right? So this is all going to contribute to our reflection and uh, our base color in most ways. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to add in a Brightness and Contrast node. 
So I'm going to go under, I think brightness and contrast should be under color. Yeah. So I'm going to put that in here. All right. So we're going to connect it to the factor like this. And we're going to set the factor into the color of the brightness and contrast. So we're going to increase the brightness to something like uh, negative 0.1. I'm going to go with negative 0.1 and we're going to increase the contrast to a 0.1. So this is a positive point one. The one is a negative point one, like that. So once we've done that, what we're gonna do now is let me just let me move this back here. Let me move this here. All right. So we're gonna add in a mix RGB from the color menu. We're gonna add in a mix RGB. We're gonna set that in here. I'm gonna move this down here. I'm gonna set the f no. Hold on. Yeah. We're gonna move it up instead. We're gonna keep it up here. I'm gonna set the uh, color into the factor. Okay. The color of this. Uh, color ramp over here into the factor of the mix shade over here. We're going to keep it on mix. We're not going to change it Just like that and keep the color at white so you can see what we have going on right here So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add in a noise texture again So pretty much we can just duplicate this one right here and then For this one we're going to increase the scale up to 15 and We are going to increase the distortion. I mean the detail to 10 and then we're going to keep the distortion at 1, all right? So I'm, go I'm going to set the, let me just move this back here, because it's going to be connecting to a lot of stuff. So I'm going to set the object straight into the vector right here, like this. And then from this noise texture, so you can see what we have with the current noise texture we have, we, ha we added it in here. Let me just preview that again. You can see what we have going on. So what this color ramp is doing is actually masking or reducing the brightness of the, uh, uh, the, uh, Right, I mean the noise texture we have going on. Okay, so it's just decreasing the color a little bit, just dampening it down a little bit for us, and that pretty much is going to end up giving us a, a less. Uh, what what do I call it? It's going to make the tire a bit less more reflective than it should be. All right. So I explained that. <clears throat> I explained that right about in the end, so you guys can understand what I mean. So let's add in the noise texture. That's what we just added in right here. So what we're going to do next is we are going to add in another color ramp from the. Uh, is it converter yeah color ramp right here and we are going to set this to B spline right here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this I'm going to increase this up to about here and I'm going to drop this down to up to about here like this all right so we're going to take this one and we're going to increase it we're going to increase the brightness up to somewhere around here like this should be good let me take a look yeah, so around there should be good. And I'm going to set the factor into the factor of the color ramp here. Like this. And let's take a preview of that. You can see what that is giving us. Right here. So what we're going to do next is we're going to add in a multiply or pretty much a mix RGB node set to multiply. So we're going to set it to multiply. So we're going to multiply the one down here on top of the one up here. Alright, like that. So let's take a look at what that gives us. Nice. So if we take a look at this one, you can see this is what we have, and this is what we have now. Let me just take a look through these ones real quick. Yeah, so we're just multiplying it on top of that one to, you know, give us some more uh, mixture going on on this tire. Alright, so what we're going to do next is we're going to go down here again. I'm going to add in a different texture, which is the Musgrave texture, alright. So we're going to set the Musgrave texture down here, and again we're going to connect the object of the texture coordinate into the vector right here. So let's work on the sentence on the Musgrave texture over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the scale up to 5, I think it's already on 5. I'm going to set the detail to 16, alright, and we're going to set the dimension to 0, alright, and the, the, what do you call it, is it like, lacunarity or lacunarity whatever you want to call it so you can set that up to two all right so we can take a preview of that it gives us this grainy kind of a uh, uh, texture going on and then what we're going to do that is you can see the, the contrast is too much so we want to dampen it down a little bit so it doesn't affect our reflection too much so what we're going to do is we're going to add in a color ramp to control this so we're going to add in a uh, let's just duplicate this one and set it in here all right and we're going to set it to linear again so what we're going to do is we're going to drop, we're going to invert it. So we're going to send the white one over here. And then let's bring this down to pretty close to it, to about this side right here. 
And what I'm going to do is I am going to let me take a look. I'm just going to increase this just a little bit like that. So you can see what we have going on just like that. Let me just drop it down a touch. No, let me increase it just a touch. All right, so there we go. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add in another mix RGB. So we're just going to duplicate this one and set it up in here like this. All right. So we're going to move this one to the bottom. And then we're going to we're going to uh plug this one up here into the top like this. Okay. So this is what we have, but we don't want to use multiply in this case. We want to use sublight just so it dumps it down a little bit more. So this is what we, we achieve using the sublight. I'm just going to pull this over here a little bit. Just use the sublight on this one, and then you're pretty much good to go. So what we're going to do is uh, we're just going to set a few more things on the uh, mix RGBs we're using right now. So over here at the factor, we're just going to increase that to a value of uh, 0.8. Just increase that to a 0.8. You can see it, it, it increases the uh, contrast of the whiteness area a little bit. You can see what that what that does so just set it to 0.8 and let's do the same thing with the soft light over here so with the soft light we're going to increase it up to a full one all right so you can see we just want to make it fuller i mean uh what do i what is the right word to use to make it uh stand out a little bit to make the white and the gray a little bit uh, contrasty in a way so just increase that to a full one and that is pretty much all that there is for the reflection area so this is the basic step this is all for the reflection. We're going to be using this to define the base color and the, uh, what do you call it? The normal and the displacement. All right. So one more thing I want to do is, uh, let me see. We're going to up, we're going to have to add in a, um, a gradient texture. So let's add in a gradient texture over here. Uh, it should be somewhere here. Gradient texture. I want to set it up to spherical. Quadratic sphere, sorry. Or is it spherical? I think it's quadratic sphere. Let me take a good look. Yeah, quadratic sphere. So just keep it on quadratic sphere. And let's set the object into that quadratic sphere. And I'm going to set the, the color of this quadratic sphere into the... Uh, where is it? The color ramp. The factor of this color ramp over here. Like this. So let's preview that and you can see what I mean. So what it is doing is, what this quadratic sphere is doing, it is creating this mask over here. So you can see, it, it kind of masks it around this area. All this area to the thread area, so you can see around here, just around here, okay? Just pretty close to the th to the threads of the tire. Around here, mask is out and make this side, all this area white, and then makes all this area gray. So what it does is, what the color ramp does is it sets that, sort of thing going for you and then when you set it up into this side into the factor over here so up here what we have is we have this noise texture going on up here all right and then we have this noise texture also going on down here so you can see this one is more swirly or this one is more uh, sort of uh, sort of a different shape than this one all right so we want this one over here this swirly one over here to be on the side of the tie over here and we want this uh, sort of smooth one over here to be on top of the threads so pretty much what we're doing is we've set that in here and we're multiplying we're multiplying it up here okay so with this one over here if we take a look at this one you can see this color ramp over here going into the factor here is masking out all of the top area here and making it making sure that none of this uh, this noise texture over here actually flows to the top so you can see it's preventing the flow of this to the top and leaving it for this one over here. This multiply node over here to actually take care of the rest. So the one down here is going to be replacing whatever we have up here. So if, if you take a look at that, you can see the one that we have, this noise texture we have down here, which is not quite detailed as the first one, is replacing everything else up here. All right. So that is the result you're getting right now. All right. So that is the first step. We're going to be moving on to the second one. So the next thing we're going to be doing is to be creating the base color of the main tire. So this thing you're seeing here is just pretty much going to be affecting the reflection, okay? So the more uh, darker areas are going to be uh, close to being reflective and the more whiter areas are going to be less reflective, pretty much, I think. So let's get on with this and then in the end I'll explain everything to you guys as it works. So the next thing we're going to be doing is creating the base color, as I said. So we're going to begin by adding in a color ramp, alright? 
So we're going to go into vector, no converter, and add in a color ramp right here. So we're just going to leave it on. We're going to leave it on linear, and then let's just pull in over here. So I'm just going to swap the positions of these these two uh, these two points over here, and I'm going to move this one pretty much to about. Let me take a look. Um, yeah, I think they're pretty close together. Uh, yeah, so let's pull it pretty close together, like that. We're pretty close together, I think. So I'm going to leave it around here, like this. And then we're going to set the color of the gradient texture into the um, factor of this one right here. So that gradient texture is going to be masking it out like that for us, as you can see. And then what we're going to do next is, I think the masking out is pretty good, yeah. So what we're going to do next is we're going to add in a mixed RGB. So let's press shift in A and add in, let's go into color and add in a mixed RGB here. So I want to set this color ramp into the factor of this mixed RGB, alright? So what we're going to do next is, um, let me see, let me take a look at this. Okay, so I think what, what we're supposed to do here is, let me just pull this back a little bit. So what we're going to do here is we're going to mask out the threads over here, okay? So I'm just going to pull this back until the white area is only covering the threads and just pull it back a little bit yeah so you can see the white area we have going on is only the threads let me see if I can pull it down a little bit more just a tiny bit more yeah, it might not work out but just a tiny bit more there we go so just adjust it until you have the white area only covering up the uh, the threads over here and pretty much all that this is going to be doing is to be defining the areas which is going to be having the dirt on it okay so obviously it's going to be a new tire but a new tire definitely will have some dirt on its threads so that is what we're trying to achieve here so over here we're going to set the base color of this uh, black area we have going on here pretty much so i'm just going to increase let me let me connect this to the viewer first and i'm just going to decrease the brightness of this one down to some uh, gray color pretty gray looking like the gray of the uh, node like that and then I'm just going to set this to a slight brown. That is the color of dirt. Okay, that is going to define the color of this white area over here. So we're going to set that to a dark brown, which I'm pretty sure should be around here. Like this. Yeah. Let me just drop that down to a little bit more dirty color. Like that. And I'm pretty sure that should do. Alright, so that will pretty much define the dust area. The area that is going to have the dirt on it. Just like that for us. And what we're going to do next is we're going to add in another mixed RGB. So I'm going to press shift in A. Under, under color, we're going to add in a mixed RGB over here. Like this. And I'm going to set the color of the first one over here to the top. And we're going to add in the uh, the color from the, um, is it the mass grape texture? I think. I think so. Let me take a look. Uh, yeah. From the mass grape texture's uh, color ramp. That is from this side. From this side okay this is the mass grip texture we have over here so the color ramp of the mass grip texture i'm just going to set that into the bottom layer of the mix rgb here i think it's it's set to mix no we're going to set that to multiply okay so we're going to set we're going to multiply the uh, mass grip texture on top of the dirt uh this mix rgb i've gone in here which is a kind of a dirt defining rgb or whatever you can call that so we're just going to set that to multiply so it multiplies on top of that so we can take a preview of that and you can see what we have going on just like that all right so i'm going to move on to the next and this is all just to define the color okay pretty much so i'm just going to increase the uh, factor up to something like um a full one let's increase it to a full one i increased it to a full one just increase it to a full one and what i want to do next is we want to define the color of the main tire okay obviously tire is black so we're going to use the color ramp to define this pretty much so let me add in a uh, a converter color ramp right here and i'm going to set that to linear it's already on linear so we're going to keep it there i'm going to pull this track over here all the way up to about this point okay and i'm going to leave this one right at the end here but i'm going to take this one and i'm going to decrease the brightness down close to a darker color Pretty much like that okay so i'm just going to increase it a touch i think that should be good yeah pretty much and then what we're going to do next is we are going to add in we are going to add in okay i actually made a mistake here over here 
this one is not actually connected to the mass grip texture right so it's pretty much connected from the from this multiply node here yeah it's connected from this multiply node so we're just gonna set that in so obviously just like I explained for the mass grip texture it's pretty much taking all of the texture we've defined over here if I preview that for you you can see all of this texture and it's adding it is multiplying it on top of the one over here so we have the dirt up here and then everything else being on this side like that so what we're going to do next is we're going to define the color so i'm going to press shift and a we've already added in this color ramp over here so i'm going to press shift and a and i'm going to add in a mixed rgb so color mixed rgb i'm going to set this to soft light all right so I just want it to be subtle not overlay soft light I want to set the color ramp, the color of the color ramp, into the first color over here. And then this actually comes from the mass grave texture. This is the one that comes from the mass grave texture's uh, color ramp. So I want to set that in there, straight in there like that. Pretty sure. Is it the mass grave texture? I'm not so sure. I need to take a look. Yeah, the mass grave texture. So just set that in there directly like that. And then you're good to go. So what we're going to do next is, let's take a preview of that. You can see what we have going on. It's pretty much the, the color of the tire and uh, some areas being uh, a little bit lighter. That is being defined by the um, the mass grave texture. So what we're going to do now is we're going to tweak the brightness with this uh, factor we have going on here. So we're just going to set that up to 0.8. Like that, to make it a little bit more brighter in these areas. You can see as I increase it, make it a little bit more brighter, making it a bit... Uh, different in contrast I mean it's not that visible but you know what I mean if you can see it hopefully you're getting the same result in your um, in yours so let's get on with this okay whoa okay, there's something going on right now I'm actually installing a video game and it's messing with my screen I don't know if you guys can see that but yeah it's messing with my screen right now but the video is actually still rolling hopefully Alright, so what we're going to do is, we're going to add in another soft light, so we're just going to take this one and duplicate it, pretty much, and set it up in here. And I think that one is also set to a point 0.8, and then what we're going to do is, we're going to take this one again, and then set it up to the bottom area over here, like that, and you can see what we have going on, just like that. So we're just adding in the, uh, the initial noise textures we added, we mixed up in here, to the top area, I mean the bottom area over here, and we're using soft light to... Uh, blend it in just like that all right so the final thing we're going to do to actually achieve the uh, color for this is to add in another mix rgb so adding the mix rgb here i'm going to leave that at mix and i'm going to set this to the bottom and then that one to the top like that now let's take a look at that all right so we're pretty much mixing the two together to achieve this and you can see what we have going on Okay, so we're just going to leave it at 0.5 just like that, and that should be good. Okay, so I'm just going to take, I'm going to take this over here. First off, let's, let's change this uh, over here on the principal BSDF. We have GGX going on over here. So we're going to change this to a multi-scatter GGX instead. And then let's take these two, press G, and move that all the way here to the right side like that. All right. So what we're going to do next is to, first off, let me connect this into the base color of the principal D BSDF. So we're going to set that into the base color like that. And let's take a look at what that looks like. Come on. Alright, so that is the base color, as you can see, we have going on. You can see all the mixtures that we added. If you take a closer look, you can see we have some kind of... Uh, I don't know what to call it but the uh, swirliness on the sides of the tire if we go up here you can see we have some well it's not that visible but all that stuff that we blended in is actually when you take a look at the raw uh, raw material over here you can see all the stuff that we have going on here is pretty much defining the base color we have down here okay so if we take a look at that it's not that visible but you can see bits of it going on in here so that's just the base color all right so what we're going to do next is we're going to set this soft light as well this one here let me just press G and bring this closer I want to set that into the roughness all right so that is going to define the roughness for us set that in there like that that should define the roughness pretty much 
nicely for us so you can see what we have going on like that so hopefully you guys had the same result but we're not done yet we still have a few more things to do to go the normal and the uh, the displacement actually so to finish this off now we're gonna create the displacement in the normal map of this uh, of this uh, tire here so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna add in a gradient texture right here so texture add in one here oh, I think we already have one going on here but whatever so let's set the object into the vector over here I'm gonna set this to is it quadratic yeah the same thing so quadratic sphere I think we, should, we could have even used this one up here oh, well, it's all the way up here so let's just continue so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add in a color ramp so we're gonna go to converter color ramp put that in here and I'm gonna set that to linear it's already on linear so I'm gonna move this all the way here and then let's swap positions like that and I'm gonna move that all the way here like this move this pretty close like that so I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna reduce the color I'm gonna drop the color down to something pretty close to gray like that is that good enough yeah I think so so what we're gonna do next is we are going to add in a multiply node all right so first off let me set this color into the factor of the color ramp we have going on here so if, if you take a look at that you can see what we have going on like that just masking it out very nicely so I think it's pretty close to too close to the top so what I'm gonna do is let me just pull it so it's pretty close to the end of the threads like that just like that and I think we can pretty much move this also close to it something pretty close like that I think that should be good I'm sure let me see yeah so like that and what I'm gonna do next is hold on before we actually continue let me move up here make sure these things are maxed out quite well let me take a look at this one too all right so there we go let's move on so down here what we're gonna add in next is we are going to add in a multiply uh, of what do you call it a mass node all right so we're gonna add in a mass node I think it's under converter mass node I want to set this to multiply all right so I want to use this to control the strength of this uh, oh, this is that from the mass grave texture yeah so of the mass grave texture we have going on up here so we're going to set the color ramp the color of this color ramp into the top socket of this mass node here I want to use this to control the strength so if I preview this you can see what we have going on so I'm just going to reduce the strength down to something pretty low very low let me see yeah, so very low so the contrast is not that big all right so let me try 0.005 okay that is pretty low but is that what i went with where did i go with sorry for that sound that's my notification sorry um let me see what was the value i think 0 0.002 so let's type that in i'm gonna wait 0 0.002 all right like that so just make it a little bit dark like that and what we're going to do now is we're going to add in a noise texture again. So let me just take this noise texture. I'm just going to duplicate it down here. And what I'm going to do next is let's increase the uh, scale to... Is that 3000 I'm seeing there? I think so. 3000. I think so. Yeah, it has to be 3000, right? Yeah, it's 3000. So set it up to 3000. Leave the detail at 10. And then uh, drop the distortion to 0. Oh crap, zero. So I'm gonna set the uh, object of this uh, texture coordinate in there as well, into the vector area of that noise texture. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Very nice, so it's grainy. This is going to create the uh, sort of uh, rough surface for this uh, tire. You'll know what I mean in the end. So let's just pull that to about here. Let's pull this up here like this. So you know where everything is connected. And let's pull this, let me pull this underneath this one over here. Like that and pull this here put this here so what we're going to do next is we're going to add in a mix rgb on the color mix rgb we're going to set that over here let me just move it over here oh, let me just drop it in there and what i'm going to do is i'm going to move this down here i'm going to drop come on i'm going to move this line down here and then what i'm going to do next is i'm going to set the uh yeah the math node the value for this math node to the bottom value here and I'm going to control the factor with this color ramp we have going on here. Okay, like this. 
So you can see what we have going on. So the mass grave texture is pretty much, uh, what do I call it? The mass grave texture, that's this texture we have up here, is pretty much visible down here. And then the noise texture we added over here, over here, is pretty much what we were seeing up here, pretty much, just like that. So what we're gonna do next is, um, and of course, the one that is controlling that mask is this gradient texture we have going on here, set into this color ramp, because that is what we've plugged into the factor. So it's controlling that mix we have going on. Or rather, let's set that, let's set that to add. Okay, we want to add them instead, not mix them. So let's add them over. And let's take a look at what that looks like. So this is gonna add the two over the, themselves like that, with the uh, factor being this this color ramp we have going on here, like this. And uh, what we're gonna do next is uh, we're gonna add in another multiply node over here. So pretty much, let's just take this one, and then let's duplicate it down here like this. And then again, we're going to set the color of this one into the top socket, just like that. And then let's keep the value at 0 0.002, because we just duplicated it, so no, no much difference. And now what we're going to do next, what we're going to do next is we're going to add another noise texture, so let's just duplicate this one, and let's move it underneath this one. And this time, the scale is 5,000. So we're going to set the scale up to 5,000, like that. And again, we're going to set the uh, the object of the text coords into the uh, noise texture over here. So we have a set to object. Now let's take a look at that, and you can see it's even more grainier, like really tiny, tiny, really tiny, yeah, just like that. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to add in another mix RGB, so let me just duplicate this one. I'm going to move that down here, and we're going to leave that at add. So I'm just going to plug this one up here to the bottom area down here. And then we're going to increase or decrease instead. Let me take a look at what that looks like. So you can see what that looks like. Very grainy look. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to drop the factor down. So we have much, something much more darker. All right. So I'm going to do with something very dark because we are defining the uh, strengths here. So it needs to be quite dark. So we're going to drop that down to... A very small value just like the uh, multiply node we have going on here so let's try 0 0.002 i went with 0 0.005 on my uh my setup here so you know let's try the 0 0.005 <clears throat> i think that one is a little bit more brighter so i think that's what we want to go with and then what, wanna, what i'm going to do again is i'm going to add in another add node so let's just duplicate this one put it over here and i want to set this one to the top of that add node automatically is going to move down to the bottom and I'm going to increase the factor to 8.5 alright like that so I'm going to leave it at 0.5 and then what we're going to do now is we're going to add in a bump node so that should be under the vector the very first one bump I want to set that in here it's going to take a while to load so we don't want to set this into the normal we want to set it into the height over here okay so we want to set that into the height and now we're gonna set this. Come on. And now, so you you can see what we have going on. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this into the displacement right here, like that. Come on. And I'm gonna drop the value down to. I think I went with uh, displacement. No wait. Did I go with? Hold on, is it a bump map? Let me take a look at this. Let me just remove this. Um, I'm taking a look at what I went with here. I don't think it was a bump map. It's a displacement map. It's a displacement map instead, okay? So let's get rid of the bump map, and then let's set this here. So we're gonna set the color into the height over here. And I wanna change the object space to, uh, I'm gonna keep it at object space, pretty much. But I'm gonna change that. And then let's drop the, uh, let's take a look at this, all right? I'm trying to get a good look at this. Uh, okay, so we're gonna set this down to a 0 0.05. Should be a 0 0.050, like that. And I'm gonna drop the medieval down to zero, pretty much. I think. Yeah. And I wanna set that into the displacement. Into the displacement, just like that.
nice so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the uh, final material just to see how this looks so i'm just going to plug that in there let's take a look at how this looks come on all right so you can see what we have going on this is not too good deal so I wanna, we want to tweak the scale around a little bit to actually achieve this. What value did I go with? Let me take a look. Point zero 0.05. Okay, let's drop this down to 0 0.003 and let's see what that gives us. Alright. So I think the strength was too much. But now you can see what we have going on. Alright, right here. Nice. cool 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 but this area actually is too rough okay so i think that is being defined by this color ramp we have going on here all right so what i want to do is i want to have this color ramp actually go up all right to the thread area because i want the more roughy surface to be on the thread area okay so more of like it runs on the uh, sand so it's going to create some dents in on the threads so that's what this color ramp is for so we're just going to define this to move it pretty close to the top that is pretty close to the threads I'm just going to make sure it gets there. Let me take this one. No, not that one. This one. I'm going to pull it in a little bit. Pull this out close to the threads. Like that. Now let's take a look at this again. The more roughy areas. Yeah, there we go. So you can see what I'm talking about. The more roughy areas being on top of this side. Just like that. Alright. So you can see we have dirt going on, but the dirt isn't actually that extreme. You can make it extreme from this side. Let me just zoom out. Just by increasing this. Oh, hold on. Yeah, so just increase that and you can see it adds the dirt to it for you. As you can see, it's increasing the brightness of the dirt. That is how you can control it. So I'm just going to keep it down to something <clears throat> about here. Like that. So yeah, that's pretty much all of the node setup, but... Uh, is there anything else we have to do yeah we have to add in the tire wall okay so the inscriptions or the writings on the side of the tire that's the final thing we're going to add in so what i'm going to do is we're going to add in an image texture we're going to use an image which i'm going to be providing to you guys uh in the description so you can just download it from my mega uh account so just add that in here and uh, let's add in a bump from the uh, vector the very first one and i'm going to set this into the height over here and then let's drop the strength to 0.2. I think I went with 0.2. And we're going to drop the uh, distance to 0.1. Like that. So I'm just going to open this. And then I'm going to open the image. Okay, so wherever you have the image saved, just uh, load in that image. So I'm, I'm going to find mine right now. You guys might not be seeing that because it's a separate window. So let me just find it real quick. G Wagon. It's right around here. There we go. So I've set that in there like that and uh, let's take a preview of that you can see how it looks like pretty much come on all right so this is not visible because we haven't actually unwrapped the tire so this is an image uh, texture so we have to unwrap the tire to be able to see what we have going on here so I'm gonna split the view over here and I'm gonna go into the uh, the is it yeah the UV editor and I'm gonna load in the image quickly so tire side should load in real quick there we go so I'm gonna go over to the side view over here and I'm gonna click or well, let me just get to the side I want to click in the middle here I'm gonna press control and plus until I have the amount I need selected so I'm gonna select this one as well and I think that including this one as well oh no not those ones leave those ones out so there we go so I'm just gonna get to the side I'm gonna press U and then unwrap this okay so you can see it unwraps very nicely for us. I'm just going to press A to select everything. I'm going to scale it to the outside boundary of the inscriptions we have going on here. So you can see it's all outside of it. Let me just scale it, I'll scale it in a little bit more. Like that. Let me just scale it in just a little bit more like that. Very nice. But it's not covering all the way. So we're going to take the inner one. I'm going to enable proportional editing. All right. Just press O to enable proportional editing. You can see it enabled here. If I press O again, it disables. Just press O to enable it. I want to press S. I want to decrease the fall off to about something like this. So let me just decrease it down until it's not affecting the outermost uh, 
vertex group over here so it, up there so you can see it's not affecting it and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom to this area right here and I'm going to press S and I'm going to scale it down until this one falls just into the uh, area right here so if we go around you can see everything is inside now just like that so that is the first one now we're going to do the same thing with this side so we're going to press A twice to deselect everything and I'm going to take this one now press ctrl plus until we have all of these selected I'm going to select this last I'm going to press U to unwrap this as well okay so we're pretty much going to do the same thing scale it down to fall right outside of it like that I think it goes all around it very nicely yeah there we go so I'm going to take this one now we already have the proportional editing set up so we're just going to zoom in over here press S and then scale it down to that point like that and there we go so if we select everything and see what we have going on both sides have been unwrapped quite nicely we'll just take a look real quick there we go so I'm gonna get I'm going to get out of edit mode and let's minimize this we are, we were done with it and then let's go back to the material preview and you can see there it is it's right there like that so what I do now is we're gonna set this into the normal of the uh, the principal BSDF we have going on here and then if we preview this it should look good it's taking a while and there we go so you can see that is looking very very great so I'll provide the link to the uh, image for you guys so you can use it and uh, yeah hopefully you had the same result we are about to preview it in uh, what do you call it hold on I think I want to increase the uh, the strength of the bump over here a little bit let me let me go with uh, where is it yeah so I'm gonna go with 0 0.005 let me see what that looks like okay let me increase it a little bit more so 0 0.01 okay 0 0.01 isn't bad but it makes it too extreme on this side so let's go with 0 0.008 see what that looks like okay so we're gonna keep it up on 0 0.008 and there's our tire so hopefully you have the same result. I'm going to end the video here, but before we actually do that, let's take a look at how this looks in uh, cycles. So let me just full screen this. And I'm going to press Z and go into rendered view. Alright. So it's rendering out. Let's give it some time. Alright, so we got the result we needed. As you can see, it's looking a lot like a realistic tire. And you can see the dirt going on on this side over here. Just had to add that to make it look more realistic. Just let it load a little bit more over here. And yeah, so there we go. So pretty much, let me show you the node setup again. So this is the one controlling the reflection, all right? So you can see if you want to reduce, if you think the reflection is too much and you want to reduce it, you can do that with these color ramps over here, all right? So if you kind of increase it, you can see the reflection is going up and down. So you can do that with the individual. Let me just undo that because I like the way it is. Come on. So you can do that with the individual color ramps over here as long as it's connected to the roughness it will affect it in some way all right so it's all up to you let me just increase this up a little bit i think i want it to be that so i'm just going to drop it somewhere around here it should be good all right so that'll pretty much do it for the tire i know this was really long because this was actually complicated all right it took me a lot of time to come up with the tire and of course i actually learned this from uh a tutor I bought a course online to actually learn this this course was uh, what do you call it uh, the first one was a Jeep modeling course it was on the cgmasters.net and the second was a second one was a Corvette course okay so both of them I learned uh, the texturing in there and I kind of combined it to actually come up with this uh, texture tie you're seeing over here so credits to Chris Plush for uh, helping me learning how to texture and everything but if you want to see the course I'm uh, the course that I actually took to be this good in 3d modeling and uh, texturing I will be providing the link to the to his uh, website for you guys to be able to and if you want to buy the course you can buy it or you know it's all up to you so yeah I also provide you guys with the image 
uh, to be able to use it so I'll, I'll see you guys in the next video this will end the video